My wife Chloe and I share a lot of the same beliefs, values, hopes, and dreams, which is why I knew within six months of dating her that I wanted to make her my wife. However, we didn't always agree on the afterlife or possibility of it, until one night in particular. She always talked about signs from her deceased loved ones or ghost stories her and her friends told. I, on the other hand, thought it was a tad ridiculous. At the time, I believed in heaven and hell, nothing in between, and wanted nothing to do with the possibility of there being a spiritual world. But one night, I was babysitting our niece so that Chloe and her sister Amber could go out for girls night. Amber was a single mom, the dad split when he found out she was pregnant, and the baby had just turned one and she hadn't been out of the house since the birth. So I sent her and my wife to dinner and out dancing. Amber warned me. She might get fussy at times during her sleep, but she either self-soothes, or all you have to do is give her the passy and rub her back for a few minutes, and she'll be back out. You don't have to take her out of the pack and play. And then, they were off to dinner. It's just you and me, kid, I said, handing her her sippy cup as she climbed up on my lap. She was an easy baby. She didn't care who put her to bed, as long as she had her bottle, passy, and her favorite blanket. So it didn't take me long to get her settled down, after reading her a couple stories, that is. The rest of the night, I was free to watch sports or read or whatever, as long as I kept the video monitor nearby and my ears open. So I headed downstairs to grab a soda and snack and find something on TV. I was watching football highlights from the week while sipping on my third Pepsi of the day. A bad habit I've since kicked. When I heard the baby start giggling. At first I just smiled and thought how cute it was she was giggling in her sleep. Then I heard a rustling noise. So I glanced over at the monitor. She was standing up giggling and staring towards the back corner of her bedroom. I watched for a few minutes to make sure she was going to settle back down like my sister-in-law had said she would. And sure enough, after a few minutes of flopping around, she went back to sleep. A short while later, I had just returned back to the couch from using the restroom and grabbing a bottle of water from the fridge. I figured I would try to find some action movie to pass the time. But it turns out, as a single mom, Amber didn't have money or time for TV, so she had the most basic cable package. I grabbed the book I'd brought with and had just started reading, when I heard fussing coming from the baby monitor. Must be another one of her wake-ups, I thought. I glanced at the monitor and was slightly concerned to see she was pointing at something. She's probably just dreaming, I reassured myself. And a few seconds later, she quieted and seemingly fell back to sleep. Neither of these events made me worry. Amber had warned me she was a restless sleeper, as I said before. So I didn't think anything suspicious was going on at this point. Until... There had been no sounds from the monitor in quite some time. The baby seemed to be sleeping soundly, which of course was a good thing. But something inside me was telling me to check anyway. As I turned to look at the monitor, I froze in fear. She was standing up, not making a peep, as if someone was standing there with her. But it was what happened next that made every hair on the back of my neck stand up. The baby laid down, put her passy in, and then all of a sudden, her blanket was moving up over her, as if someone was standing there, tucking her in. I immediately sprung into action, thinking maybe the monitor glitched and wasn't showing whoever was in the room tucking her in. I flew up the stairs at lightning speed, phone ready to hit send on 911. But when I opened the door to the nursery, there really wasn't anyone there. I checked the window, shut and locked up tight. The closet, no one in there. I collapsed down to the floor as her teeny hand came out, happy to see me. I couldn't leave her in that room, 
not after just witnessing what I did. I hadn't had time to process what was going on. I just grabbed her and brought her downstairs with me. I let her fall asleep on the couch next to me. Later, when my wife and Amber got home, they instantly knew something was up because she was on the couch and because they could see concern on my face. As I explained, they both know I was serious, because they both knew how much I didn't believe in the possibility of ghosts or the spirit world. We didn't say much to each other on the drive home. I was processing the evening's events, and my wife was probably thinking, Ha! I told you so. But a few days later, Amber called us with an update. She started researching and digging into who owned the house before, and found out it belonged to a young couple almost 20 years ago who lost one of their children to SIDS. Because the death happened so many years ago, her realtor didn't have to disclose it when she was looking into buying the house. As she dug more, she found a few local internet forum discussions about the house and people experiencing things in it. Apparently, it's believed that the mother of the child who passed couldn't handle the pain and took her life a few years later. Now, if there is a child in the house, her spirit is known to try to care for it, as she would her own. I don't know, a ghost babysitter sounds good to me. An extra pair of hands to put the child down for bed? But in all seriousness, I'm glad your niece is okay, and thank you for sharing your story. I always love hearing how people come to believe in the paranormal. And if any of you have a paranormal story to share, email it to the address in the description below. Please like the video and subscribe if you haven't. Bear with me as I experiment with a new posting schedule to see if it helps. And with that, see you soon, friends.